What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and in today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to use, how to read and how to discern the information provided in the waveform and the RGB parade. There's actually several different ways to use these tools from white balancing to contrast ratios and so much more. Also, if you wanna make your projects look and feel big budget, then I put together a live one hour free webinar that's taking place next Monday on November 8th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Plus by signing up, you will be automatically entered to win my freelance colorist masterclass. I will be picking three winners at the end of the training. So click the link below to join and I will see you in the live training. Now you guys know what to do. If you're enjoying the content here, please be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Be sure to hit that bell notification to get notified notified of every upload and don't forget to follow us on Instagram for all kinds of updates and behind the scenes content and with that let's roll the intro. Alright guys, so as I mentioned, today's video is going to be sort of piggybacking off of the vector scope video and we kind of break this down into three parts of the video. So the first part is going to be talking about how we use the tool, what it's for, uh, instances where we may want to you know, lean on that tool to give our, ourselves a little bit more reassurance based on just the subjectiveness of our eyes looking at an image. We can back that up with factual objective data that's going to be represented by the scopes. And then I'm also going to show you how the tool works, how to read it, how to actually get that information out of the scope. And then I'm going to show you a lot of the different settings, uh, maybe not every single setting, but all the ones I'm going to go to uh, on a day to day basis. So we're gonna start off with a waveform here. There's a few different display modes for the waveform. And I'm gonna start off by setting it to Y with colorize enabled, and you'll see why in just a minute. Um, so I've got three shots here, all of them just a little bit different. And you'll see how that colorize function, instead of it all just being white, representing the luminance, we've also got color with it. So it helps us you know, identify the different parts of the frame and then translate that very quickly over to which part of the scope would be representing that part of the frame. So leaving it as Y, and then we're gonna leave it colorize on. This image doesn't help as much because it's all kind of the same color. But if we bounce over to our first shot here, we can see we have all this blue surrounded by a brighter area that is more warm, more tungsten, if you will. So there's a few different ways to set your scopes up. And currently I have it in a percentage value, but most often you're gonna see it uh, in a 10 bit value, which is from zero to 1023. That's obviously all the bits in 10 bit video. And that's obviously a perfectly fine way to read it. That's usually how I have mine set up. But for the sake of this video, since we're just gonna be looking at brightness, I'm actually gonna switch it over uh, to percentage because it's gonna help us explain things with a little bit more ease. So the waveform or RGB parade, whichever one you're looking at, in either case, it is a one-to-one -one representation of the luminance of your image from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. So looking at this shot here, I'm gonna go ahead and use this to demonstrate what the scope is doing and then what I would use it for. So we've got this skyline here and I have my display qualifier focus enabled, which is going to translate uh, the point that I'm hovering over in the frame to that point in the actual waveform. Again, this information is being read left to right. So the leftmost part of the frame moving along to the right part of the frame. And then the only thing that determines how high an element of the trace is, is the brightness of that, that part of the frame. So here, the brightness of the skyline is going from the darkest point right around you know 25 to 30 percent uh, luminance all the way up to right around 55 percent luminance and then we see the shadows here they're lower not because they're lower in the frame they're only lower because they're not as bright they're darker parts of the frame uh, so over here probably gets all the way down to right around seven nits maybe and then it brightens up obviously we cross over from this reflection of a shadow to a reflection of the sky and that's where we kind of make that jump between these two levels here so we're going from right around 10 to 12% brightness here up to right around 15 to 18%. And then now we also have this warmer and brighter part of the frame here. Let's scrub through. And you see like this part where she just kind of breathed onto the window. Uh, you'll see as she exhales, we start to see a brighter part of that trace be developed. So right here, we don't have a very bright spot because we're looking straight through that glass and we're just seeing the background, not a whole lot happening. And then as she exhales, now the light hits that, that frost that's forming there, not necessarily frost, but you get the point, um, on the window. And so we start to see that become brighter. As she exhales, that trace goes up, it gets brighter. And then to demonstrate this one more way, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have this node prior, one node under our color space transform, because this is just black magic footage and this node is just taking it from black magic to rec 709. So in this node here, I'm gonna make a circular power window. 
We're gonna turn off that feathering. You'll see why in a second. I'm gonna cover this up. We're gonna go to our curves and then make that pure black. Nothing's coming through. And we're gonna invert this. So now you'll see wherever we move this sort of spotlight effect, uh, that's kind of what we're getting in the trace as well. So we're getting the sky here and we're looking at the sky. As we move this down though, the information we're examining is changing. So this is kind of how you want to read the scope almost uh, mentally. You want to block out the information you don't need and say, how bright is the inside? I'm going to analyze that part of the waveform there. And then how bright is the outside or how dark rather. And this colorized function of the waveforms trace when you have it set to luminance, that helps us more quickly identify which part of the frame we're looking at, which part of the frame we're analyzing. Again, here it is set to off, so don't have colorize enabled. And now it's a little bit more difficult to pinpoint which part of the frame is which. Um, so that's super handy. One little check for you. Uh, I always keep that one enabled, keep that as an option there. Uh, now we're gonna go over to RGB. And what we're looking at here is the red, green, and blue channels all stacked on top of each other. And again, it's all the same information, just different ways to display it. But to help demonstrate how to read this one, we're actually gonna hop over to the parade. And now we have our Y RGB parade. So this is a, kind of a combination of all those. Uh, we have the luminance of the image here, and then the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And one way you can use this tool, again, is for white balancing. The last one we may have used more for just examining illuminance and contrast. Uh, but here, if we need to adjust white balance, we could use this scope specifically. Now, the tricky thing here is to get a true white balance, you kind of need something that's truly neutral, color neutral in the frame. Um, and by neutral, I mean you know, no saturation. The reason is when something is completely white or desaturated, all of these channels, they're gonna sync up perfectly. So if we desaturate this image, I'm gonna go over here and reset this node. And then we're gonna go to our RGB mixer and set it to monochrome. Well, now there's absolutely no color in the image. And that's why all of these channels are matching up identically. So the luminance, the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel are all the same, obviously. And that's you know, clearly the case whenever you have a black and white image, but we would use that same theory whenever we're you know, trying to create a, a nice white balance. Now, obviously this shot is, is kind of balanced as is. We're shooting in blue hour, so it's only natural that we see that blue channel come up a little bit more. But if we go over to this next shot here, um, this one it was obviously shot with the intention of being warmer, but if we wanted to give it a little bit more of a neutral look, we could add a serial node underneath our color space transform. And then let's go over to offset and our primaries bars. And let's try and neutralize these a little bit. Let's try and get them more on the same level. So we're gonna bring our red channel down a little bit. We're gonna bring our green channel down. We're gonna bring our blue channel up. Maybe right around there. So that's not necessarily a better looking image, um, but it would be a little bit more balanced by definition. Now, there's not necessarily anything in this frame that would be perfectly white. Almost everything in here has got some kind of tint to it, uh, I guess with the exception of this little bit of a book right here. Um, so how would you know when you have the right white balance? That's a question I get asked all the time. It's like, hey, you know, there's nothing white in this frame and the white balance is clearly off, so how do I know when I've done it right? How do I know when the white balance is, is correct? And the answer is kind of a three-part answer. It's experience, judgment, and story. Those are the three things that you need to bring together to help make that decision of when your white balance is correct. Um, and in the absence of one, so if there's no story, I guess if you're just creating this one shot like I am here in this tutorial, then you kind of just need to go off of experience or judgment, or you can just assign it its own story and then just kind of make believe that's the reason behind your decision making. So judgment, experience, and story, what do I mean by that? Well, judgment meaning you know, just looking at the image, does it feel right? And that's why having a calibrated monitor is so useful because it gives you that faith that the image you're looking at, that's the true ones and zeros of the image being displayed on a screen that you know is reliable and you can trust. You don't have any colored lighting around you that's you know affecting the way you're viewing and your eyes are interpreting that image. Everything's neutral and it's, it's a true representation of the actual data in the video file. Um, so that's very useful because then you can trust that to make your own subjective decisions on what looks right. And that's the thing, it is subjective. There's not necessarily a right answer there. Um, it's based on your judgment. The second thing is experience. And that experience is gonna come from seeing thousands of different lighting scenarios where you have different mixed lighting. Um, this next shot here, we have 
probably a little bit different temperature inside in the shadow versus the outside. So do you want to white balance to the outside or the inside where the subject is at? And honestly, just grading thousands and thousands of shots, you're going to be able to look at the image and, and pinpoint the area of the frame that does need to be properly balanced and then you know, balance according to that. But you also have to mix in the story. If we're going for more of a cold look, we could probably sit fine with it right here. But if the whole thing has a little bit more of a warmer tone, well, then we may want to you know, just aid our color grading process by giving this a little bit more warmth now, uh, by kind of leaning into those, those natural greens that are already in the image. And that gives the image less of this LED look and then gives us more of a natural vibe as if it's actually being you know, naturally lit, which it looks like it was. So that's how you kind of mix in the judgment experience and story. Um, judgment actually trusting your monitor and your eyes and, and knowing that what you're looking at looks good and looks neutral or at least balanced according to the surrounding pieces uh, of that that video and then experience just by seeing thousands and thousands of shots and knowing you know what inputs you need to make and and how you need to make them to make sure that shot looks as neutral and natural as it can um, and then lastly story how are you going to use the the story of the piece you're working on to help make decisions on should you make this shot neutral or should you let that super blue cast live? Is that what the director of photography had in mind when he was shooting this piece? All right, so now that I've gone off on that tangent, we'll go ahead and bounce back in uh, to the scopes here. More just looking at the waveform. As I said, this is the RGB parade, but all stacked on top of each other. So if we look at the parade, we'll just turn on the RGB and then bounce it back to the waveform. It's the same thing. We're just taking all three of these channels and then stacking them onto one. And again, this kind of does the same thing of helping you ensure that the blue, green, and red, if you're trying to neutralize them to a specific point in the frame, you can do that. So if you wanted to kill any saturation and get rid of that blue cast in the sky up here, we could do that by taking our red channel, bring it up, bring it to that blue channel, bring the green up, and we're just gonna match those right there. So now I've kind of got this uh, desaturated skyline. And obviously it looks terrible because one, we're working with a compressed footage, uh, and two, that's not how the clip was intended to be manipulated. The clip wasn't asking to be balanced there. Uh, it's blue hour, so it should be blue, and that's how it's supposed to look. They're not supposed to be level. Um, so again, all goes back to that judgment, experience, and story. So lastly, let's go ahead and look at some of the controls and settings I like to use. Um, mainly right here at the top for your RGB, you have the option to select one to three different channels uh, that you want to be displayed here. And then next up we have colorize, which I've shown you guys how this works. Uh, primarily I use it when I'm just displaying that the luminance value, the Y there, we see that. And then uh, after that we have the extents. Same as the vector scope video, this just shows you the brightest parts and the darkest parts of the image because sometimes that trace is just too faint to actually show where those pixels really do reach. Um, so this just helps give you a, a better idea of how bright your image is getting. And then we have a waveform slider, which obviously allows us to adjust the brightness of the waveform and the graticule, which gives us the option to adjust the brightness of these markers here, these identifiers. All of this is the same as, uh, as the vector scope video. Of course, there's a lot of correlations there, uh, but there's some differences too, such as the reference levels. So we can turn on show reference levels. And if you have you know, a certain black point that the entire project needs to be at, so you can set that to right around five. So 5% uh, in this case, um, and that's actually going to be zero to hundred, regardless of the, uh, the way you choose to display that zero to hundred scale there. If you're doing it based on percentage or 10 bit values, um, that's always going to be zero to hundred over here, which that's also why I wanted to show you guys this in zero to hundred fashion, because it makes the correlation a little bit simpler. So here we set it to five and that can be useful for say you are, you're grading your project and you need the shadows at the darkest part of the image, that black point to consistently sit right around five. 5%. And of course that would be a very stylistic choice, um, but very quickly and easily you can set that reference level there at 5% and then you can easily match up all your shots to have that similar black point. And then you could do the same thing with the high reference level and you can turn those off just by clicking there. You can reset the view same as before. And like I said, CBCR, that's one that it's a little bit different. That's why I'm not getting into it in this video because it does not read the same way. It actually splits from the middle um, and the way that the information is interpreted and then displayed is a little bit different. So we'll get into that in a separate video, but stay tuned because that will be coming as well. And as we hop over into the Y tab, just the luminance, nothing else is really different here. Um, all the same information. If we switch over to Parade, now we're gonna see again, RGB is an option. YRGB and then YCBCR, which again, not gonna go into that today, but for RGB, actually we'll do YRGB because it kind of covers both. Same tools, we have colorize. You can also just have them as black and white if you want. You can have extents, same thing there, showing you the, the peaks of the information. And then the parade, make that brighter or darker. The graticule, brighter or darker. 
and then reference levels once again and a reset view. So I know that was a little bit rushed. There's a lot of information to get through in just around 20 minutes, um, but I hope you enjoyed that quick breakdown of how to read, use, and discern the information within the RGB Parade and the Waveform Monitor or Scope in DaVinci Resolve. All right, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope I was able to demonstrate just how useful scopes can be for a number of tasks. And of course, as useful as they can be, there's a huge caveat with that, and that is not to be overly reliant on the scopes for creative decisions, because creative decisions are just that. They're creative, they're subjective, and the scopes are primarily a form of showing us and confirming objective information. Where your black points are, where your white points are, the contrast and saturation levels, and white balancing in some cases, so you don't want to be too reliant on that in grading because grading is such a subjective and personal storytelling device. So with that said, guys, thanks so much for watching. Definitely check out that link down below to get yourself signed up for our latest free training. I think it's one of the best we've put out yet. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.